<laughs> Once again, please. Hello and welcome to Zorka Agency Podcast, your home of influencer marketing. Today we discuss uh, latest in-game updates and of course industry insight and I'm happy to introduce my colleagues for today's episode, uh, Ilya Lotarev, uh, Strategy Director and Creative Director Aroma, who will join us from Lisbon today. And uh, we'll discuss celebrity marketing and start with the latest case for Diablo 4 campaign with Sarah Michelle Gellard who uh, is known for her role as Buffy Summers in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She has taken part in the promotion of Diablo 4. You may be not familiar with Diablo 4, but I'm sure that you've uh, seen Buffy Summers in this series. So the actress uh, started start in a short promotional video in which she talks about the contest which Blizzard uh, actually launched in honor of Season of Blood. So participants need to record a short video in which they have to explain or demonstrate why they are best suited for the role of Vampire Hunter. So it was really viral, viral case. But today we are going to discuss uh, more earlier viral merch mention and Pedro Pascal collaboration. So uh, the campaign consisted of three key uh, stages. First one, it's actually Pedro's videos um, that um, started and gathered paid and organic views, offline influencer event, and of course, media impressions. So uh, let's jump into the discussion of the creative uh, campaign. Roma, can you tell us more about this case in terms of this creativity? Yeah, of course, uh, the campaign called Unlocking Merch Mansion consisted of three K pillars. And first of all, it's a series of tie-in short films where Pedro Pascal plays a detective named Tim Rockford. Immersive and uh, interactive experience in real mansion for super fans and influencers. And of course, media APR support for all activations. And uh, the goal of the entire campaign was to answer the question, what is grandma hiding? This creative message, uh, I think, um, gave an intriguing format of communication with the audience. Uh, let's start to to, to look uh, at the campaign uh, of each part of campaign and uh, trilogy of sh- short films published one after another with a lack of one two weeks, uh, aimed to bring the game story to life and give players uh, a, a real world experience. This approach and style of uh, movie trailers. Uh, allowed the films to get enough attention, but also kept the viral momentum going with the new content. The second part of the campaign, where Metacore and Jack Morton Agency took over a real-life mansion in Los Angeles, and Beast Bash very appropriately called this unique experience like a part-of-life uh, action theater, part escape room, and part lore museum. And I totally agree with that. Um, The uh, the live experience featured actors playing in-game characters uh, who guided guests uh, through the space to find the clues and uh, solve puzzles. And there, uh, uh, artificial intelligence was used to create artworks, personal documents, clues, and other details. Midjourney was seen in postcards uh, from the fictional town of Hopewell Bay, and ChatGPT generated copies seen uh, in the house on invitations and in a voicemail. Uh, later, the influencers would create their own content based on the event. One of the content creators, the game theorist, uh, became a series regular and would partner with Merch Mansion even the, uh, after, the camp- after the campaign. Of course, there was even more content from creators, especially on Instagram, and this makes sense because uh, this social media channel is still relevant to the target audience of the game. So, needless to say, there was plenty of organic content and reactions. Uh, a lot of it came from Twitter, now called X, uh, which is uh, still able to generate a lot of authentic buzz about the event. And uh, in the final, uh, fans even begged the question, is a merch mansion movie in our future? And I think it's a good opportunity to continue the campaign in the future because it um, made some uh, monument for this one. Uh, 
and because and, and because more and more games go beyond gameplay and become uh, like an entertainment content we can see a lot of examples like uh, arcane like uh, the last of us and much more so yeah the first time i've, I've seen this offline event the real merch mansion is stated i was fascinated it's, it was so real they put into the life, uh, you know, this trend, bring the game into the life so you can touch this mystery, you can see what's Grandma hiding and the whole campaign was united with one main idea, you know, this mystery, what's behind this Apple Pie America. Ilya, what's behind the KPIs? Because we all want to know, is it uh, just a waste of money for Pedro or how celebrity marketing works? I'm planning to discuss because, of course, uh, the issue that any you know creative agency struggle with is how do how do we support how do we uh, find an argument for um, including an influencer or maybe a celebrity, because it can never fully measure the effects of the campaign. Um, on the first glance, just the um, the sort of like reach uh, results, we had 33.8 million views uh, in the first 20 days. There were, there were three videos and a bunch of other recuts that were later used in YouTube shorts and Instagram reels and stories and TikTok, etc. Altogether, the agency found that uh, there were 168 million social media impressions, which is quite a lot. Um, I'm assuming most of them were in the US and English-speaking countries, of course, given the language of the campaign. And there were 32 press hits and releases, at least those that were um, or initiated by the game or agency themselves. And of course, there were plenty of other PR supporting organic material, quote unquote, because Pedro Pascal is such a um, hot actor, I can say, both literally and figuratively. Um, and yeah, there were a lot of uh, media surrounding the campaign as well. When it comes to buzz around the campaign, we can, of course, you can see in the graph that there were uh, quite like three huge peaks, which uh, coincide with three. Uh, with the publications of three main videos, as well as the influencers event later in April. Uh, in total, we found 50,000 organic mentions from March to September, as in 50,000 people actually mentioned uh, Pedro Pascal and Merge Mentions in one sentence um, on social media, maybe Twitter, now X, or Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, whatever. Um, of course, we can't measure the sort of like water cooler talk offline, but I'm sure that was happening as well. Um, and importantly enough, that buzz, that viral buzz, did translate to downloads because that's sort of like the key, um, the key goal of any campaign that uh, is made for an app or a game, uh, the key goal of any business, etc. Uh, in general, and of course we can see that uh, there was a huge, up to 56% boost in downloads, which clearly correlated with the launch of the videos themselves. So on the graphs you can see three peaks, which were um, which happened like these peaks and downloads happened during the first three to five days after the publication of the video. So the video went online, the video went viral, and it translated to downloads. Um, and it's important it wasn't just downloads. Um, a huge issue right now in mobile marketing in general is how do we attribute downloads to ad campaigns, to UA, to influencer marketing? Are they actually organic? Because pretty sure all um, that analysis platforms like Aptica, like that AI, like App Magic, they all contribute quote unquote organic installs to any installs which didn't originate from a trackable paid link, which of course is not always the case because some links, some web referral, um, web referrals aren't registered correctly due to cookie blockers um, on devices. Sometimes people see the ad but decide to search for the game themselves, so the install is registered as organic even though it was triggered by an ad campaign. Uh, but still, even here, we we can see clear 5% growth in quote-unquote organic downloads during the campaign. So from 74.2, it went to 78.93%, almost 80% of the installs were organic. At the same time, as we remember, there were more downloads in general. And it's important to remember that even after the campaign was over, the share of organic downloads stayed higher, around 75%, which means that people uh, still remember the game because and the campaign had long-lasting impact, the so-called snowball effect. Um, and I guess even more important for game developers, game publishers, etc., it's not just the number of downloads, but the quality of players. And the quality is usually measured in retention and the revenue per download. 
Um, here, once again, as we can see on the graph, uh, revenue per download was consistent. It actually grew somewhat uh, during and after the campaign. Uh, there were also, you can see, a bunch of peaks. Of course, these peaks are closely correlated to the in-game events rather than Pedro Pascal videos. Uh, but still, you can see there's, um, there are several peaks which are which happened at the same time when the videos were published. There was also a huge peak during the first week of May when there was a huge in-game event in uh, Merging Mansions. Uh, but importantly, that the audience that Pedro Pascal case attracted wasn't just a random audience that, like the actor, decided to try out the game and delete it the next day. No, it was a high-quality audience that stayed playing and that stayed... Um, State contributing to the game, as in being a paid player. Um, yeah, and these are the key insights, these are the key KPIs. I feel like uh, Merge Mansions did well, I feel like Pedro Pascal did well, Grandma as well, <laughs> of course, <laughs> Grandma is the key, key character. Uh, Pedro Pascal, it's important that the visuals from uh, the videos and his likeness is still being used in UA creatives, in banner creatives, in... Uh, sort of like just paid uh, media in general, so you can still say how you can still see how a uh, Pedro Pascal and Merge Mansions are made made in heaven because there was a huge huge joint support uh, from the audience for both the game and the actor, and so you can see how um, using a lovable um, actor actress using a celebrity a lot of people um, respect and like actually converts to. Um, active and engaged players in the game. Uh, Lia Roma, and what's your you know perspective about uh, the ideal time of the of the celebrity marketing campaigns? For example, if we have budget, is it for us to you know incorporate celebrity marketing in the launch stage of the campaign or pre-registration? Or maybe after some in-game up updates of the, the game is uh, maybe one or two years uh, on the market. Is it uh, any correlation between celeb celebrity marketing and campaign stages? So we can launch it whenever we have a chance. Mm, I think that it is suitable in two phases of the launch. And of course, when uh, the game have a huge update. Uh, because when we need um, to spread uh, the news about the game, uh, something, uh, some information about it. But sometimes, uh, as I can see, uh, game uh, studios uh, use celebrity marketing on the stage of production of the game. For example, we can see it uh, in the games like uh, Cyberpunk or Death Stranding, because they started to use a celebrity marketing uh, um, uh, on the production stage and it helps uh, to make a buzz before the game uh, uh, will be launched. And, and, and do you have from any you know thoughts about how long does it take to make such cases? Maybe some advertisers or product managers will think okay uh, the Last of Us is on hype, so let's jump into Pedro Pascal, let's collaborate with him. Or it's take a longer time, maybe up to three months, four months. What mm, do you think of it? I think it depends on um, the level of production. Because we, when you need to film, uh, um, to film a video in the movie style, uh, you, need, um, uh, you, you need to have a a lot of time on pre-production pre uh, stage, of course, yeah. And I think it takes a lot of time to negotiate uh, with a celebrity too, because he have his own schedule, um, and it's hard to to take a slot. Yeah, okay. yeah. And and let's summarize with the key insight that we discuss here about celebrity marketing. First one, Ida, what three main elements it brings besides, you know, uh, more uh, payable audience. So, sure. yeah. I mean, I would argue that payable audience sort of like is the key goal of any uh, mobile uh, mobile app campaign, of course. But yeah, when it comes to three key, I guess, elements or objectives of any um, celebrity run campaign, uh, the first one is to make sure that the audience um, of your game uh, actually recognizes a celebrity and there's a huge... Um, there's a lot of similarities between the two, that the audience knows and respects the uh, celebrity you're trying to engage. 
it's also important that the celebrity manages to bring uh, a new audience rather than um, rather than bring just uh, you know the recurring uh, audience already in the game. So it needs to be sure that it's similar enough to the recurring players, but also exciting enough for the new players. Uh, the second one uh, is, of course, the uh, as Roma mentioned, the availability of celebrity and his or the, his her their um, readiness to play the long game. Because it's not just you know stand in front of a green screen, sort of like uh, um, read your lines and go and go home. Uh, it's important that the celebrity is open for several ads, for several formats, that maybe his voice or their voice or their likeness can be used um, in further campaigns. So it's a it's in the long run, of course. And the third one is mostly for the brand managers and uh, marketing directors of the games themselves. They should be ready that the campaign costs. A campaign like this costs a lot, maybe like several tens of millions of dollars and the publisher should be ready to spend that money and uh, of course wait for a positive return on investment but not as quick as they would like to as we can see it is definitely a long like uh, it's a long run game it's a um, return that comes back after several months of uh, active uh, advertising of in-game events of uh, maybe working with returning players and recurring players so it's definitely, you should be able to not only support the idea of using a celebrity, but also be ready to wait several months until your investment becomes, uh, until you get a positive return on your ad investment. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I was really looking forward to this episode because uh, I wanted to discuss with you this case, this uh, Pedro Pascal collaboration with Merrick mentioned because there are so uh, lots of insights uh, in there. And um, stay tuned to our Zero Occasions podcast where you can find uh, all the valuable information and insights. And I hope you guys uh, see you in the next episodes. And that's it for today. Uh, have fun and uh, stay tuned. Perfect. Perfect. Stay. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.